right we are good to go all right good afternoon everyone uh, we are welcome to our sixth episode of scm talk show season 4 the last episode was uh, on smart factories myths and realities and this episode is on magic of segmentation and supply chain uh as you know the topics we choose from uh, the responses from the of the survey that we uh, we had sent and also we look for availability of good speakers so based on these two we select the topics yeah, the session will be recorded and made available to uh, made available free on mobile uh, or on novox mobile app as well as on novox youtube channel so if you want to or look at the past episodes also you can go to our youtube channel and look at all the episodes and uh, during the you know talk show similar to our earlier earlier practice we will put everyone into listen only mode okay so everyone is going to be in the listen only mode and uh, like all previous times please submit your queries questions in chat box we will take few uh, most asked questions at the end of the session if the time permits so it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker mr vishwanath rajamanikam popularly called vishi so vishi is head business planning imia region auto em auto compounds metal and lifestyle at hankel adhesives He is 2002 graduate in instrumentation and control engineering from NIT Trichy. It's a very prestigious institute, and 2005 post graduate in supply chain management from NITI. Again, a very prestigious institute. He also completed his CPM certification from Apex US. So, in all put together, he has total of more than 18 years of uh, our experience. He worked with Wipro, E Peripherals, Reliance Retail, Rakit Bengisar. so he has worked in multiple roles in henkel uh, like supply chain head for henkel anand demand planning head for henkel group in india as as i said earlier he is currently heading uh, the business planning for henkel adhesives imia that is india middle east and africa region automotive division he handles snop uh, the sales and operations planning process for automotive division comprising of 3 sbus business value of Uh, more than approximately 200 million euro uh, from major countries of india uh, the, the the turkey uh, south africa and gcc so welcome vishi uh, thank you very much uh, ravi for this opportunity uh, novarex is uh, very much known and uh, very long time associated like i remember i did my cpim through nowhere ex actually and uh, at the beginning of my career and so it's it's a very uh, i'm very honored and the, it's a great service you guys are doing to the education industry for sure helping the uh, people get certified and all those things that's a very commendable job and i'm very honored to speak in this platform thanks thanks ravi it's our pleasure we see to at the same time you know you have so much of experience so it's very valuable if you, uh, to share with our uh, you know partner so thank you very much for accepting our invitation uh so you know well, let me start the talk show so before, for the benefit of some listeners who may not uh, know a segmentation who may be new to the uh, word and uh, the concept of segmentation what is segmentation exactly yeah uh, segmentation is a very uh, familiar topic uh, but it is not very familiar also in use it's not used effectively so what is segmentation is like you divide the marketplace or any data set to in a multiple segments and parts and how and each segment should have a similar behavior or needs so that you are able to use that information effectively for various purposes so segment is about dividing the market into a Uh, multiple pieces so that's simple uh, uh, explanation of the segmentation basically <clears throat> so how do you go about creating segments how do you collect i mean do, do you start with using customer profiles or demographics or how do you collect the data on which characteristics do you group customers and how do you go about creating segments 
Yeah, I, here it's again uh, specific to industry. Uh, again, it's it's a uh, we we are majorly into a B two B segment in Henkel. Uh, what we do here is majorly we consider the business size and uh, what type of involvement we require with the customer. Like, is it a innovativeness of the customer is also plays a role. Like, is there a customer is an innovator or is a follower or they they work with the existing uh, product and technologies like what are the product range they use it and what level of partnership they do it like they do uh, early early involvement or they uh, take the product off the shelf and use it and depends on all those things so we work on all those four parameters we use size and what are the product range innovativeness and how the partnership they uh, work with these are the four parameters generally we consider to uh, segment the customers for our areas. So what products you have which automotive industry uses generally? We have uh, it's, it's a we are uh, Henkel is into a multiple category major uh, business B2B is adhesives where we supply a chemical which is used for end to end uh, automotive manufacturing or even in a multiple industry where we provide adhesives which are used for various purposes in terms of uh, uh, application or performance also like that. It's adhesive chemical what we supply to automotive OEMs and also the multiple industry basically. So in the new car that was that smell that we get is, is it from Henkel? No, it is a, actually it's a lot of other chemicals are also involved. Even paint is a chemical like that. So it's one of the chemical which is adhesive or the promoting the adhesion of multiple things. Like for example, a sealing a glass. Uh, you have a glass shield on the car. So adhesive, uh, sticking that glass onto a car is is ha happening through adhesive, which is supplied by Henkel. Like that, in a car, there are like more than 100 application areas, different places and different parts and different shapes and sizes. We supply material, which goes into a, a look, a performance, and uh, even safety of the material and sound quality. We give material which seals the car uh, holes and other thing, because it goes in the performance. When you have a car, it is also increasing the fuel efficiency by reducing the weight of the car. So it is it reduces your crash performance, like you, your safety goes down. So we provide a lot of chemicals and the parts and the material, which helps the car safety can be increased, which gives more strength. So we have we work on high end chemicals uh, globally, and we do a lot of innovation around that, and which is used for improving the performance without increasing the weight of the car. So these are the few areas. So a smell uh, comes at the later stage, and because it goes into a lot of processing, so it's not related to a, a, a I can't call it as a Henkel chemical. It is a chemical, but it's a sort of uh, different reasons. My impression always was that they, they, this is a smell of adhesives, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> Anyway, so how do you go about using your, uh, you know, segments, customer segments? Yeah. What uh, do you do with them? Okay, so we, uh, yeah, when we divide the market uh, into a different segments which are similar in nature, which are having a similar type of uh, behaviors within the segment. So what our our approach is majorly uh, based on how do you match our uh, efficiency, how we operate within our supply chain, how you define or design your supply chain to meet the service expectations of the segment. Each segment have a different expectation and different uh, needs of uh, coming out of each segment, for example, and the major work is based on the one of the paper which was published in 2006 uh, in Harvard Business Review. It, it is called uh, for a benefit of uh, uh, audience. Also, I'm just mentioning the uh, title of the paper. It is called Breaking the Trade Off Between Efficiency and Service by Francis Frey. Maybe I can put it on the chat link. And that was a basic uh, uh, paper which which talks about how do you what are the different variabilities are there in the expectation of customer or different customer expectation or different levels of variabilities are getting introduced in terms of customer variability in terms of customer expectations etc and then it talks about like what are the different strategies you have to handle those variabilities within your capabilities how do you build your capabilities how do you invest your efficient your, your resources to meet those capabilities and also what are the different means like instrumental means or a normative means you have it to behave to handle the behavior or shape the behavior of the customer so that we get a better benefit of 
matching the uh, service expectation and what you deliver. A simple one more example, if I uh, tell it will be very easy to understand. Like when we talk about um, uh, Netflix is a very famous example. We all know uh, how it is. When uh, how did they enter? When they entered an industry, the DVD market was facing a lot of challenges of timely return of DVDs, etc. There was a late fee was late we late fee was uh, charged, which customers were feeling very dissatisfied and a lot of tension was building up. This is a sort of instrumental means or putting fine to create a thing. It was creating a problem in customers mind. They were not happy and they were feeling like I'm not uh, having a, a freedom to do it. And Netflix came up with the option of saying that no, we don't have any late fee. Customer can return and take the next a DVD. So that is more of a normative means like you, you put a behavior on customer instead of putting on a fine or anything like that. So that is a business opportunity they worked with. And what did they do exactly is about they just picked the friction between expectation and delivery and they build the business model around that. So this is one classic example of how you can use the segment to understand the customer better and then build your deliverable or your uh, offering to meet that a gap in the offering, and then you build your business model around that. This is one classic example of how you can use your uh, segment for your uh, deliverable to make it better, your organization to perform better. Great, wonderful. So, uh, you know, do you also, since you are uh, in head of demand planning also, do you also use segmentation some way in demand planning? Uh, is that used? Yeah, de definitely. Like we use a, a again a, a different type of segmentation there. We use a product segmentation there, where you we use two parameters like uh, a size of the business, like what is a sales value we have, ABC classification. We use it, and then there is a forecastability of the product, like is it a co co coefficient of variation (COV). We use it. Where is it X Y Z classification? We do it. Uh, if a product is highly forecastable or it is difficult to forecast based on the history, so then we use that AX, AY and BX, the top left of the quadrant, we use it, we leave the system to forecast, system to predict, which is doable. And we focus on the bottom right triangle, which is CY, CZ or BZ. Those are low value or not a big value contributor. Also, it's not very sporadic. It's, it's very sporadic in nature. So those products, we try to work on different strategies, like instead of keeping a stock, keep it as a make to order strategy so that you don't need to forecast, re respond to the orders. And there is a middle area which is not very less, not very high, not very difficult, but not easy also to forecast. That is the area we use on collaboration, more working towards detailing, not only depending on system, use multiple information. So. This is a way of we segment the data into three buckets. Focus one on the system. Second, give the responsibility to customer to order on time. And the middle area where it is where you optimize your efforts, collaboration and everything. That's how we use in the segmentation part of it where uh, for the demand planning, etc. Wonderful. I think, uh, you know, you have, you have taught the CPM class, it seems, you know, <laughs> XYZ and ABC and so on. So Dheeraj Arora has raised his hand. We'll take his question at the end, you know, not now. So Dheeraj, please, you know, wait till the end. Uh, so would you like to talk about sure. your experience or case study on, on magic of segmentation? What magic it, it got created? Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, in, a, in a pandemic time, we always uh, heard a lot about uh, when, when COVID strike, actually what happened? A lot of organizations started talking about reducing complexity, cutting tail, et cetera, et cetera, as a reaction to the situation, like reducing pack sizes, reducing variance. They don't focus on all the variants. They were trying to focus on few products, stop selling, et cetera. Uh, what did they do is purely they were trying to utilize the resources effectively. So this is not a new concept rather and organizations where there is a huge complexity involved like a, uh, luckily, uh, when I was working with Rakit or in the Henkel, the complexity was very high. They always handle multiple brands or a multiple customer ranges. So the challenge was always there. The concept what I'm talking about is more than 10 years back. This started working on and everything. So what what we were exactly doing was about like how you how you get your um, 
how you get your uh, efforts uh, utilized better. So I can take two examples to explain the concept. One is in the case of Rekit. Uh, we always have a different uh, different products and different uh, uh, examples like a different margin range of products. You don't get all the products give same out output. Like some products are commodity sort of mark uh, products. Some are highly high margin and specialized and maybe a low volume product also. So every organization will have all sets of product. You cannot have all high volume and low margin product. Uh, low uh, high uh, both segments have to be balanced so that you take some low volume, uh, high volume product to reduce your overhead. So you cannot have all one type of uh, basket, basically, like having all Tendulkar, Levin Tendulkar may not be a great winning team. Like you will have to have a balance of everything. So that's how it is like. So that's one example of how your variability or this different segment comes into use to make a winning combination. So. Again, second is like your your response with your uh, supply chain strategy for different segment should be different. A product which is a commodity sort of product, you cannot have a luxurious or a, a, a you can't make a delivery on your uh, ad hoc basis. You should have a very, very structured planned basis. You cannot deviate from the regular plan. You cannot take a less than truckload deliveries. You will have to have a full truck deliveries. So that is where you need to be clear. Where do I put my money? Because see, supply chain is at the end of the day, it's not following the book of Bible. You will be taking a decision. You will be deviating. There will be urgent orders. How do you handle those orders? Do I... Uh, do I take all the orders or do I justify my efforts and money in a way which is meaningful to the organization strategy or the product strategy? So this is that example, like if you understand the product falling in which category of basket, you will be able to take a right decision in supply chain in terms of what support or what service variation I give it to customer when it comes up. And about the second example, again in Henkel, very similar uh, example. We are handling a, a wide range of industries. It's it's like we also product commodity to specialty chemicals and also the B2B like traditional transactional customer to a distributor to a OEM directly handling. So it's all range of customer. I can't handle all customer in the same way. At the same time, so what, what we need to do is like if you understand the customer expectation and their approach, like we talked about those characteristics, like what type of involvement you have, like you, do you get involved in the early stage of car design or you get involved like last minute supply starting. So if you understand those things, you will be able to put your efforts and resources in a better way. Like you, how do you do your consolidation projects? Do I consolidate for a OEM? May not be. I'll be doing high volume supplies directly to OEM as they want. But when I come to a distributor, I will do a consolidation. I will have a milk run supplies. I will not do a special vehicle running. All those things I can do it. I, as we talked about like make to order strategy for those products on to the lower category on the other side of it you keep an inventory and some places you can keep raw material also don't produce the inventory you delay your production so you can put your strategies in place if you understand the different segments of products customer and also the market that is how we uh, did a lot of wonders so uh, this is not one project or one thing. It is a tool for us to find different projects and different implementation. That's why we call it as a magic, because if it is a tool, you just implement it and then that's it. The tool is done. This is not about that. This is more of a journey, a path finding a different projects. You decide what will help the organization, what will make a wonder for you. You will have to find yourself using this dividing and identifying and narrowing down the problem and resources and matching that. That's why we call it as a magic here. A lot of insight, Vishy, a lot of hard work, it seems, you know, I mean, I'm going to come back to you on how you started your career and how you got into all this. But before that, how many products and how many customers and how many segments you've handled, you know, I mean, that will probably talk about complexity, you know, how complex it is, how easy it is to do what you're saying, what you have done. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, 
as i was telling like in a, in a year henkel overall we handle around more than 1000 customers in india itself when i say 1000 customers it will be a it varies from very small to very big when we say 1000 customers we can't uh, have any differentiated approach to any customer that is where the segmentation comes into picture i can't visualize all those 1000 customers or how do i improve the service that is where the segmentation comes so instead of seeing 1000 is a huge number for anybody to visualize or put a strategy around it you try to see that in five different basket or we we have it as a five segment we make it and that five segments helps me to visualize a customer on segment 1 is this type of customer okay they expect a service they pay for that they expect no deviation on that and there is other segment of customer who if works on low cost a cost focused customers who who are not very much they keep inventory at their end so that they are managing their things and the expectation from you is limited so you are aware of that so this segments is what helping me to minimize the complexity in my mind business will be complex because we have to handle uh, different uh, customers and different products that's what the business is all about i can't simplify that too much because that's the bread and butter of this organization how do you simplify your understanding and your approach and your that is how the segmentation fits in between these two so uh, so what type of uh, i mean you said you have b2b but you also mentioned somewhere distributor do you also have distributors uh, through you yes. distribute yeah so actually uh, in in henkel we handle um, different segment uh, like automotive is one of that we have industrial thing like for example we supply lot of chemicals for a pump efficiency improvement or a vrm business vehicle repair and maintenance business and like that the different industry we we cater to in automotive uh, there is again three segments are there like oem is direct one supply and there is another one called component supply where we supply to a tier one who uses our product and they produce and they supply to oem and also we supply through distributor and this all the type of things we supply to a oem we supply to a tier 1 we supply to a distributor and we also distribute on to multiple levels that's why we have uh, more than 1000 customers we cater to in india directly even now so these distributors are for aftermarket is that what it is yeah it is also for after markets and even in small cases of tier 1 in some small segments we route through distributor to avoid a complexity on a different range of products so talking about suitability of segmentation uh, what kind of companies where let's say b2b kind of companies or b2c kind of companies it's suitable or it's all kind of companies actually this this is a sort of a it's it's suitable for any organization because it's not a ready made solution it's more of a, you are looking at the market and the product in a different uh, lens and you are trying to break that into a, understand better and then try to match it so it can be used for any 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 sort of organization because it is it is a, a step by step looking at a critical parameters and you take your resources you optimize your resources to meet those like product customer and bridge the gap in the expectation so it can be done for any industry it suits very well it's it's more of a strategy tool and it's a journey where supply chain and business come together in terms of prioritizing the challenges and where do i invest my resource and time that's how it is so it can be used for any industry and organization so what would you say about implementation of you know segmentation to any business do you look for a business size or number of customers or uh, what kind of organization and how do you go about uh, implementation yeah uh, definitely this is more to do with the complex organization it is more meaningful because if it is a very simple structure you will be able to take lot of decisions directly when there is a complexity increases you would require a lot of uh, segmentation helps you to think better and uh, channelize your efforts better so only thing is it's not a quick fix right it's not it just a, a journey it's just a stop so you need to have that uh, patience and clarity and commitment and have a customer in mind when you approach this it's not like you try to solve a problem of cost or a supply chain it's not about that it's 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 you should have a end to end view don't take a silo approach in while approaching a segmentation and uh, connecting the strategy have a customer in mind keep your values organ every organization have a different values and values are those which are dnas and that should be in sync with what you are trying to do so these are the two major things keep a customer in mind 
keep an organizational value in sync with you what you're doing. If you have this given time, it will be giving benefits what you wanted to achieve. Wonderful. So a lot of, uh, I think, insights from a practical point of view. Now I'll come to the next segment uh, of your talk show. How did you choose supply chain management as your specialization? Yeah, it's a, it's a different, uh, difficult uh, question in a way, because today supply chain is more prominent. It is in the uh, words of a president or a prime minister today. Yep. And earlier time, it was not so famous like today because of uh, various reasons it is famous today. But and uh, yeah, in uh, 15, uh, when I started my career, it was not that famous as uh, it's, it's a very prominent question and it always come to my mind because I also started my career with l &T and started with a technical area completely working on a DRD projects for technical area where we, I was working on a design, VLSI design and implementing a real time operating system, etc. for a rocket launcher DRDO project I was working on. So the good thing about my first responsibility was it gave me a responsibility from design, a testing, prototyping, and then integrating with a full system. It's a part of a project I work on, and then I get into overall project under the project and then get it integrated and tested and implemented. So it, it gave me end to end life cycle of my experience. So designing was purely technical i was doing it when i get into it after testing when i go into prototyping that is a time when i start interacting with vendor to in convert the design to a technology uh, workable thing in terms of pcb manufacturing etc so the mass production etc comes up so that is the time when i realized design is having too many intelligent people and i it's not my cup of tea actually and having a good design is one part of it and commercializing it and making it work is equally competent in tough area and having a lot of problems. And I was working in l and at Pawai and uh, uh, NITI, I happened to interact with few uh, uh, college students who were studying in NITI and that was a time being close to uh, NITI, I got a exposure to what NITI is doing and I was very interested to understand like they are talking about creating a techno managers and that fitted in my uh, that gap what I was perceiving in my experiences in the first year in LNT and that college what it was offering was fitting in very well in my uh, gap uh, area. So they were talking about how do we understand commercials better? How do we improve the collaborations of suppliers and customers? And how do we plan, not design, plan and make the plan better, project management? And those were the very, very interesting blind spots for me. So that's where I got interested and got into Niti. That's how I ended up in getting into supply chain. And I thought like that is an area where I mean, it's like, as I told, like it was not so famous, but that was a reason why also I thought a opportunity for me to get in and make my career on that critical area. Very, very interesting. So what were some of your highs and lows after your university during your working career? Yeah, uh, as I told, like, uh, yeah, in uh, from NIT Trichy, it was a very, uh, I did my uh, engineering and instrumentation and control. One of the toughest branch, like to clear without a rear was very tough. And l &T was the company which is which, which had a criteria set that uh, you should have a no history of arrears. So it's not like you clear the arrears, you should not have arrears ever in your life. Even if you clear after having arrear, you're not eligible to sit. And that was a company uh, l and I got in. I was very happy when at the time that was one of the high actually. I was to leave after a year. I wasn't aware at that time. So getting into l and was one of the great moment for me. And second one is like my first four years of uh, Henkel where I had a, a consecutively three times I could uh, achieve uh, a best supply chain award. And that was my another high moment for me. And uh, and a low moment, if I have to tell, is like um, Rakit was a great company to work and very, very uh, happy about working that. I did not think I'll be leaving this organization for uh, medical reasons. Uh, I was to come. I was working in a plant a remote location like at Sitarganj. I was working 
and coming back, I was needing to come to a metro city and that was a time when I felt like it was a low moment for me to come for a medical reason from a, a career. I have to change and come to a, a Delhi location and that was a low moment and again every moment is actually having a trajectory and change in that uh, situation. So it was a that was a low moment for me. So I think uh, you are handling a lot of responsibility at a very young age, I feel. You know, you have had a great career and a lot of successful career. So uh, can you tell us some stories that you lived through in a career in supply chain management, especially? Yeah. Uh, uh, OK. Some aha can... moments, aha moments. Yeah, OK, something, so I something. I... something <laughs> OK, so uh, when when I joined uh, Henkel, right, as I told, like I moved to Henkel uh, from Sitarganj plant location to a, a Gurgaon, I came back for a medical reasons. I wanted to be in a metro location. So when I joined and my interview went like this, like uh, they said, first thing is like uh, the last uh, one year, there were four supply chain managers and come and gone. That is a position we want you to come. That is the first, I mean, after having initial technical discussion, and that's how I was second round of interview they were taking and explaining. They wanted to be sure that uh, they are aware of the complexity and I don't be the fifth person leaving after joining. So that's how they set the context. And I liked it very much about Henkel. That's the reason why I'm sticking for 10 years. After 10 years also, I am there. So first thing they told is this. I was the fifth person would be joining that organization in that position. And they clearly explained there was a huge uh, cost leakage. There was air freight and material clarity was not there at that time. There were a lot of problems in the planning and customers are very demanding and we are not able to meet that level of expectation. And uh, th that was the situation and explained. And when I joined, yeah, clearly every opportunity for improvement and every area there was a potential to change and improve. So it it, it went from people, process and technology like uh, people. They were again, the pressure is again not at only the top level, right? You have different level also. Everybody feel the pressure. That's why even the turnaround at all levels were very high. So then it was more of like understanding who are people and what are their challenges and what are the gap areas we tried filling in those positions. And then we talked about process, like what are the process gaps are there which are creating the problem in terms of planning, in terms of uh, horizon, what you are planning? Uh, is it in line to the lead time, in line to the customer expectations? Are we having right strategy, inventory, et cetera? And also talked about uh, resources, like do we have a right amount of aerospace because always we had this trade off like I don't have enough space vehicle waiting and vehicles are there, material not there. It's it's a quite a thing and customer was very demanding because we handle customer who works in just in time business. So you are capability comes later. Customer is working in just in time. They have stock for two hours of material. You have to be efficient and reach on time irrespective of your capability. So that was a situation. So the, it was a huge pressure for the team. So the so setting each one process resources, getting right warehouse infrastructure, and also organization was uh, uh, getting SAP rollout, etc. So all those people, process, technology and resources, setting all those things right, and then making it work in, in sync and filling those gaps and taking right decision and trade-offs at every point of time. That helped. Uh, uh, that's that's the, also one of the high moment which I mentioned, like first year was all went into this and second to fourth year, that was a time we turned it around from deep red to green consecutively three years. We have a four supply chain in India, four supply chain uh, groups were there in India. And first year was deep red. We had a no award in any category of uh, 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 service level or a inventory or a cost or a customer complaint. Any of the category all were in red category. And second to fourth year, we achieved uh, green on all categories and consecutively four years uh, out of four years, three years, we could achieve that. And that was a story of end-to-end uh, -end turnaround, what we could do. It was not one step, clearly. It was steps on all those areas which helped to achieve. Sounds like a lot of hard work. You must have spent a lot of nights, I think, in the office. Yeah, first year was definitely uh, a time for us to put that, uh, uh, burn that night oil and everything. It was a very tough time. And really a uh, very interesting time. Uh, again, you don't uh, feel like you are losing time when you are having that freedom 
because that that's all uh, set on that first statement of my interview what they could did they could do uh, setting that expectation clearly and they explicitly mentioned the situation they didn't keep anything as a surprise that is a important uh, culture or the uh, i appreciate it very much or i, I respect that uh, transparency what they brought that helped me a lot to set my expectations also right that first year i gave completely on to setting the things right and that's how it went on excellent excellent so there's a lot of value to uh, i think our listeners so i would like to ask you you know what is your advice to our listeners you know in terms of growing their career uh, in terms of maybe academics maybe in terms of work hard work characteristics whatever 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 you think can make a person successful what is your advice to listeners yeah uh, like um, scm as a profession it is becoming very very uh, specialized now it is not like a general role uh, earlier it used to be handled by different people like operations handle logistics or procurement handled by somebody else it's not like that scm is becoming a very very specialized area so clearly a uh, digital is becoming a uh, important aspects so a data data uh, pr- data prudence and you should be very very conversant with the data and second important thing is supply chain is not in isolation it is becoming a highly connected in multiple dimensions so it's not only your supplier you should be focusing on it's like uh, you uh, like for example uh, we don't we may not be buying from china but the impact what is happening in china is hitting your situation today so it's no more like what who's who are your suppliers it's a network of things it's a global village if uh, something happens in somewhere in the world is hitting us our availability or uh, supplies you may not be buying from them you may not be supplying to them so the world is becoming too uh, connected so it's important that you should be able to take a decision making in a uh, short no short time with a limited data and that vulnerability is so high today so how efficiently you are able to take a decisions in a short thing i mean uh, be comfortable with the uh, unknown situations that will be the important thing we all have to uh, improve ourselves continuously and third thing is like take experience from all the places like uh, my lot of learning happened when i was in a plant or a shop floor location when or i was in a customer side or trying to meet those customers so try to take experience from all the places and keep learning don't stop learning and then one more point is like uh, no don't put a pressure on yourself in terms of like uh, about the experience or the years if you are learning continuously and if you are able to contribute to the organization in a better way one year or 10 year is not required that you need to move away and don't even if if you think you are not able to uh, learn something new or you are not able to contribute effectively don't need to wait for uh, years because you don't count years it doesn't matter even if you have to leave in 2 years you, you you better leave it so don't take pressure of years as experience and these are the few points i would think like today's professional should think in terms of uh, career in supply chain and last thing uh, maybe you should not uh, happiness is not about winning it's about state of mind you can enjoy even everything what you do uh, be in that state don't try to be happy only when you achieve this so be happy when whatever you do keep a small small milestones and keep enjoying the moment and so that you enjoy the journey and you don't need to enjoy at the end of uh, everything that may be the important aspect the supply chain is considered or it is really a high pressure jobs and we we are the carrier of the mess, mess, good message or bad message also so we we get to impact by backwards all the problem like material not there and we are in trouble production down we are in trouble communicating to customer so take it as it comes and don't try to take too much of pressure keep keep enjoying every moment that may be a important aspect in today's uh, tough world great great advice you know so i think covid 19 has put uh, supply chain management in center spot you know i think you know talked about president and prime ministers talking about the supply chain supply chain supply chain and so on you know i i still remember one speech by narendra modi prime minister narendra modi i think he used supply chain 19 times i counted in his speech so that is uh, oh center stage uh, we got to center stage now i have a question you know what is the future of supply chain management why should people choose supply chain management as a career what's the future 
yeah uh, uh supply chain management uh, as i was talking about is like um, design uh, uh, i mean design is a highly under uh, i mean highly overrated area and uh, execution is a highly underrated so supply chain comes in terms of mostly into the making the plan work and a lot of good plans fail and um, supply chain management is more of a area where it is a backbone of the organization really speaking and it is not about one area like you may have a lot of good design lot of product development team lot of sales team unless and until you connect them uh, efficiently and the organization may not have a successful uh, implementation or rollout and another point is like the recent uh, study etc with after covid and thanks to covid uh, recent ceo's appointment having a significant increase on ops background people so that is clearly shows it is taking the center stage and organizations are i mean uh, okay us and all had a good um, focus on supply chain but globally it has got a prominence and supply chain is becoming a core of organization a lot of organization are thriving and if we combine the supply chain and the data analytic capabilities and it is exponentially growing and it's very interesting area and for anybody to grow and excel in their life and really it's it's a uh, cxo possibilities are very much there in supply chain thank you vishy anything that you would like to add or you'd like to talk about you know i mean it's it's more about like uh, yeah I, I talked about that uh, happiness and everything and pressure is what uh, we all learn about uh, pressure and also maybe one more point i can mention about like uh, we all maybe in a different levels and maybe in a different years of people your peers might be growing faster and this thing don't compare yourself with others and it's all different people are in different journey uh, it's it's no comparison and that all will make you feel uncomfortable so no need to compare at times you may be going faster don't get uh, uh, don't take it to your head and uh, if, even if you are going slow don't worry about it it's all like you are making a firm foundation that's how you see it so keep enjoying and take the without hey, don't take the pressure and keep the work going on that's how that's one point i would want to mention with all the pressure which all supply chain team goes through which i see across my career across the industry across company this is very common i see in terms of people coming under pressure thanks vishy uh, so i think uh, i'll have nistush take over and if there are any questions you know ask questions sure right so thank you so much vishy for uh, you know as uh, ravinder said such an informative and insightful session a, a lot of new things and probably a lot of things in details learned by the audience today uh, so we have a few questions uh, here i'll take it up one by one uh, so this one is by rajesh how segmentations help create a supply chain strategy yeah okay um, so supply chain strategy so you talk about uh, uh when you talk about supply chain strategy you are talking about uh, decisions related to make or buy or a store where to store do i store or do i not store is it a make to stock or a make to order all those decisions so inventory decisions you take it and based on that you take your warehousing decisions and based on your uh, capacity decisions you take it these are the key decisions you take it in a supply chain so when you do your segmentation and connect your expectations along with that like okay what products you keep in make to strategy make to order and make to stock you define and then which customer you allocate what variations on demand etc you you allocate or accommodate then you are able to define your warehouse requirements as per that and then also based on your based on those strategy you are able to decide your capacities and build your make or buy decision so these are the various key decisions you take what network where from i buy and how do i supply so all those things can be linked effectively if we are able to segment it better and connect with that as we talked about like uh, the category of for portfolio where we said like well, these are the z category we said that we will not store the material that that decision helps you to take a decision of you don't need to store so warehousing decisions are possible so like that you are able to connect uh, supply chain strategy and decisions with the segments how you are able to use it hope i answered the question 
Absolutely, I think. All right, so uh, if we have Mr. Dheera Zerura with us, I would request you to please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Yeah, hi. Uh, hello, sir. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, sir, uh, in the segmented sourcing strategy, uh, we study about four type of customers. So based upon the uh, suppliers strategic importance and the suppliers uh, business percentage with the customer. So we generally study that there are four types of customers. One is the nuisance, the other one is development, then core and the exploit customer. So sir, are you guys also segmenting your customers into these four categories? And if yes, then what are the key strategies you have implemented? to deal with the, especially with the nuisance and the exploit ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dheeraj, actually here it is talking more towards the uh, supplier and uh, uh, other side of relationship. Here we are talking, trying to talk about like as a supplier, how we are handling our customer. OK, our our strategy we are trying to put. It's not exactly on to this cat, this segmentation we are talking about. So in, in our segmentation, what we are talking about, like how do I segment the customer in such a way that I put my supply chain design to support that expectations and also need to justify the cost and everything. Um, so I'm not very familiar about this strategy, what you're talking about, segmented sourcing strategy. And here, uh, exploit, you said that nuisance, development, core and exploit customer. OK, yes. so so this is more to do with the supplier and customer side of it. Here we are talking about how do I see as a supplier in terms of customer? So it's slightly different, so we don't try to categorize in this way. Uh, so we we different differently do it uh, thing. Direct, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Right. Thank you. So we have another comment and question from uh, Rishikesh. He says, "Thanks, Rishi, for the words of wisdom. Uh, for organizations to survive in the market, NPI is of uh, subtle importance, and I believe supply chain helps for the time to market and." volume to market. This question is how Henkel is working on this NPI strategies. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks Rishikesh for the question. Um, yeah, uh, as I told, like when we uh, look at the parameters of segmentation, one of the key parameters is like what is the innovation of the organization or the customer innovation level? And also what is the level of involvement we have in our uh, development uh, cycle. Uh, do you get involved early in the development or you get involved post or during the launch you get involved? So based on that cycle, uh, NPI, we have uh, two things. One is a home ground innovation where Henkel works on continuously. There is a strategy roadmap and everything. And the second one is like from the customer side of it, what are the needs and how collaborative are we? And that that is a key uh, topic which gets into segmenting the customer himself. If a customer is in a category which is a highly uh, collaborated network where we get early involved in the new po new product introduction and those things helps us to improve the time to market. And if if the customer is in the basket of uh, uh, less collaboration or late uh, late involvement, and that becomes a difficult for us to improve the time to market. So effectively, it's not that the segmentation is not a static thing here. It's like as the customer grows, as the needs grows, as the customer also matures, as they also grow, the segment keep changing. So it's not a static information you do once and leave it. No, it's not like that. So you continuously work on that and keep uh, revising the uh, status and keep verifying the expectations and your uh, need. So you consider this. So this helps you to understand where do you improve in terms of collaboration for new product introduction. So this is how Henkel is operating, like how early we can move. Today, if I'm getting involved at the launch phase, can I get involved in the design launch itself before even concept design itself? So that's how you do it. And Henkel, we work continuously on a specific customers 
uh, to involve ourselves with more resources on that. So there is always a resource allocation done for improving the NPI timelines. So that's how Henkel is strategizing their NPI projects uh, in terms of resource allocations. Thank you. So the next question is from uh, Sarang. Uh, do you get experience to build use case of smart connected supply chain, use of latest technology, blockchain, digitization, etc.? Okay. Uh, so we are uh, working on uh, some of the pro proof of concept in house. Like it is, it is more of a new technology, as you rightly said, Sarang. Uh, we are uh, trying to work on certain automatic replenishment models wherein we are trying to get a system at a customer end stock and the consumption at a, a tier multiple tier levels uh, information flow in an efficient way which will help us to instead of depending on forecasting you are able to get a more information it is not a very new concept but at the same time the technology the IO, iot and all those areas which are making it more uh, doable now so we are doing some poc concept to integrate uh, uh, multiple levels of uh, information at a customer side so that we are able to plan in advance before even customer realizes the requirement we are able to go for uh, planning the raw material etc so that's how we are working and this is more of a, a sort of concept level uh, it's not even uh, it's a poc is working on but it is a clearly a, a focus area for henkel and uh, one 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 example i can tell like we supply chemicals to a uh, car manufacturing where they use it in a preparing a bath bath is nothing but a chemical uh, in a water bath where the metal is sent into that and then the dip dip into the bath bath maybe it's a big one to 10000 liter of uh, chemical uh, 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 chemical dipped into that one so the lot of parameter etc are critical to see the quality of the uh, cleaning etc so we have a lot of IoT devices are available to predict the quality of the bath, like what will be the output of the outcome. Like if you dip the metal, how efficient it, the cleaning will be, all those things can be predicted using that uh, information of the thick, uh, the quality of the material and the chemical nature. And we continuously having a sensors to communicate what happens. So that information gives us a predict the downtime and when do I need to re replace the bath, etc. can be predicted well in advance. So those bath chemicals, we will be able to uh, plan when customer will need it. Even customer doesn't know what is the requirement, when do they require that chemicals. So those things we are able to predict. So these are the proof of concepts which are running currently and really these are uh, no, no limitation of what can be done. And these are the areas where we are working as a POC. Once it gets successful, we have a lot of other uh, bigger plans to expand that uh, applications to multiple areas. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sushi. Uh, so this was the last question from audience. Uh, there's just a few seconds. If anyone has any other question, you can unmute yourself and speak up. All right, so if you do not have further questions, uh, I'd like to thank Vishy for uh, such a great session for uh, taking out time, joining us and providing all the insights on uh, segmentation. Uh, thank you so much, Ravi sir, for uh, conducting this uh, session and being such a wonderful host once again. And thanks to all the audience for joining in on Saturday, uh, being regular listeners to SCM Talk Show. If you like it, please spread it among your friends and colleagues. Uh, we will have the second last episode of season three on 2nd July at 4 p.m. IST on the same link. Uh, the speakers and the topic for, for that would be shared soon on social media. So keep following us on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, thank yes, we have a recording and it will be shared soon. Uh, I will share it on the chat box of uh, Microsoft Teams. And as well, you can follow our YouTube page. Uh, you will find the recording there uh, in a couple of days maximum. Right, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining in. Have a great weekend ahead. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thanks a lot. Have a nice week. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you.